1975, I've been working with professional athletes. Agenting involves three basic components. One is the ability to recruit a client. The second is the ability to negotiate a contract for a client. And the third is the ability to maintain or deal with day-to-day -day needs. The work of being an agent um, entails people from a number of different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Some of them are lawyers, some of them come out of financial backgrounds, but it's the same function. But I think something value added helps. Mm -hmm. Whether someone's going to go to business school and get an MBA or to go to law school and get a law degree, um, but again, that sports agency started with Steve Bartkowski. And my wonderful office at that point mm -hmm. was a card room in my parents' house. So I was my own secretary and I would run and get things copied at Kinko's Copies. And if you called me on the phone uh, and I was on it, it had this strange sound. It, it rang busy and you had to wait. Um, so it was a different world then, but um, I didn't have a fancy office. It was really six years until that happened. I had an unusual beginning. Mm -hmm. I was a dorm counselor in an undergrad dorm while I was going to law school at Berkeley. Mm -hmm. And they moved the freshman football team into the dorm. My job was to make sure one wall was left standing by the end of the year. One of those students turned out to be Steve Bartkowski, who in 1975 was the very first player picked in the first round of the NFL draft. In March of 1975, Bartkowski asked me to represent him. There I was just brimming with legal experience, never having practiced before, and I had the first pick in the draft. So off we went to Atlanta to sign this amazing contract. And when we got there, we were stunned because there were cleat lights flashing in the sky. A huge crowd was pressed up against the police line. And the first thing we heard was, we interrupt the Johnny Carson show to bring you a special news bulletin. Steve Barkowski and his attorney, Lee Steinberg, have just arrived at the Atlanta airport. We switch you live for an in-depth interview. But that's when I saw the extraordinary idol worship and veneration that athletes are held in communities across the country. It really was serendipitous uh -huh. because um, it looked like at that point I'd, I'd go into politics. If you'd ask somebody uh, who went to school with me, because I was student body president of elementary and junior high and high school and Berkeley and the law school, um, so they would have thought that would have been, that was what I was raised to do. I was sort of raised to participate in, in participant sports, um, but I never really thought of it as a craft. At that point, most people wanted to be entertainment lawyers and uh, to be somehow involved in motion pictures. Um, as I said, the field was embryonic at that point, and it's de uh, obviously developed since then. In 1993, Cameron Crowe, who I admired, asked if he could follow me. He came to the 1993 league meetings in Palm Desert, to the 1993 draft, to the 1993 signing of Drew Bledsoe. He came to the pro scouting day at SC in 1994 and to the Super Bowl and to a number of games. And he was a fly on the wall watching. And I told him stories about everything we were going through. Um, and then he wrote the script. And then they came to my office and they took pictures out the window. They took a picture of uh, me and Drew Bledsoe and put Tom Cruise's head where mine would have gone. They took my awards off the walls and, and put Jerry Maguire where I had received the award. Um, they took my wardrobe and yellow pads and tried to emulate everything. So I think that, that someone who's starting a career ought to think outside the square. Um, first of all, when applying for a job, be creative. We get thousands of resumes every single week, every single year. And it's those people that can distinguish themselves from the mass 
that have a better opportunity of attracting attention and getting hired. Because otherwise, your resume is going to sit in a stack of thousands of resumes and no one will really look at it. So that is critical in trying to attract attention. Um, and, and then to pick a career where you can make a meaningful difference in the world and you can make things different. And think of yourself as an agent, uh, agent of change. But really, to be successful in this world, the critical key is having passion for what you do.